Hi everybody, it's uh, John back again with another Model Inbox review. Um, interesting subject this one. I'll, I just want to go through a couple of photographs before we go through the Inbox review on this one because um, there may have been an interest from people as to why only two of the Tempest. This is actually a Hawker Tempest obviously, but why only two of the marks of Tempest were ever manufactured um, and one of them only on a limited scale. Um, what you're looking at here is obviously a Mark V Tempest. This was the um, the last variant produced, if you like. Um, I think this one is actually a late production Mark V. And I just before we go into the inbox review, I just want to show you um, what the other marks look like. The original Tempest. This is a Tempest prototype, and this is what's classed as the first incarnation of the Hawker Tempest Mark I, powered with the Napier Sabre Mark IV engine. The Napier Sabre Mark IV actually had um, the aircraft's air, air filters in little wing root radiators. Sorry, the aircraft's radiators, the coolant radiators, were actually built into the aircraft's uh, leading edge near the wing root. And that's why the aircraft had a much more... Um, spindly and tapered nose section to the aircraft but they had incredible problems with the cooling system when the radiators were fitted into the wing roots being quite small they weren't really man enough to provide enough coolant for that enormous engine um, and also the prototype had the typhoon style rear tail plane with the typhoon tail fin as you can see here and it had an unusual sort of um, almost car door style uh, canopy, which was quite interesting as well. And then the Mark I was uh, upgraded. You can see the radiator, uh, radiator intakes here on the wing roots. And it still had the Typhoon tail fin. Um, but the, the Tempest Mark I was, was fitted with a bubble canopy. Uh, during the, uh, like the, the initial stages of the aircraft's production, but the Mark I was very quickly dropped in favour of this variant of the aircraft, the Mark II. The Mark II was, of course, powered by the Bristol Sidley Centaurus Mark IV radial engine. Um, and these aircraft tended to serve the RAF in um, Far Eastern areas and like Oriental areas, Singapore, places like that where it was much hotter and, and the aircraft's air-cooled engine could actually accommodate the cooling quite an, an awful lot easier in hot and, and arid conditions. And the Mark II, um, not very often modelled, but you can buy a, a number of them here and there um, in model form. And it's a nice looking aircraft. The Tempest Mark II was, of course, a, an immediate precursor for the, for the Fury and the Sea Fury. Um, they weren't actually the same airframe, but they did look predominantly similar. Um, you know, they look so similar, they look virtually like the same airplane, but they were actually very different. Um, the Mark III Tempest looked like this, and this was powered by a Rolls-Royce Griffin Mark IIb engine. This is the same engine that powered the Mark XII Spitfire um, back in 1942. Um, and they were running preliminary trials at Hawker on... Um, Tempest and uh, Typhoon style airframes to produce the Tempest Mark III and again this aircraft was dropped because the wing mounted radiators just didn't have the manpower to cool this enormous engine it was a massive engine but the Mark III had promise but it just didn't actually it didn't fruit you know to a, to a successful design then in 19 uh, sorry in 1944 you had the Tempest Mark IV, and this was interesting because this was powered by Griffin's 61 engine, which had, which accommodated a contraprop, and it had an enormous chin-mounted um, air intake uh, directly in front of the engine itself and directly underneath it. And these, of course, were the same engines that powered the, uh, the Lincoln and the Shackleton bombers. Um, although the air intake system on the Lincoln and Shackleton were slightly different to this. Uh, but this aircraft showed a lot of promise, but the large surface area behind the propeller um, actually increased the drag on the aircraft and it did affect the aeroplane's handling characteristics. Um, and the predominant, uh, the, sorry, the, the, the final version 
that was released was, of course, the Mark V, which we're doing a model inbox review on of this version itself. And this is the more common known uh, mark of Tempest that was in service. Tempest was actually one of the few aircraft that was remarkably good at um, dealing with the V-1 flying boat, uh, the V-1 flying bomb threat. Um, the other aircraft, of course, were the Griffin-powered Spitfires, especially the Mark 12s, which came out just in time um, for the V-1 threats to be uh, to be dealt with. But the Tempest was equally as good at dealing with them too. Anyway, what model are we doing an inbox review on? Well, it's this one, although not this boxing. This is the Revell 144 scale mini series, which is now called Micro Wing series. Hawker Tempest Mark V. And this particular boxing was released as number 16, although it's not number 16 anymore. Um, but it is interesting to see that it is number 16. The original kit was released in 1973 uh, as a Revell release. Um, a lot of Revell mini wings and micro wing series are actually based on Gunzai Sanyo kits, but this was a a Revell release which was quite nice to see and then in 1973 um, they also teamed up with a company in Japan to produce Revell Japan and they released this kit as well in that same year uh, it's exactly the same kit same artwork same everything really you know there's no difference whatsoever in the kit but it was Revell Japan and the way you can tell a Revell Japan kit is it has Japanese information above this mini wing series logo here then in 1975 um, Revell teamed up with a company called Concost. Congost. Um, not sure where they sold these models through, but I've got a feeling it was Spain or Spanish-speaking countries. Um, again, it's the same model, same artwork, same everything in the box, everything exactly the same as the kit that I'm about to do an inbox review on. Uh, 1975 release there goes through to another 75 release, and again, it's still marked as number 16, but this is a more familiar format um, in the mid 70s when Revell released their mini wing series in yellow boxes same artwork as before um, exactly the same but these are these were more common in the sh in the sh on the shop shelves in the mid 70s 1975 goes through to 1976 and an interesting kit here because this is um, Revell's 1976 release in 144 scale of their British aircraft set in. Now this set comprised of a Spitfire, a Hurricane, the Hawker Typhoon and the Hawker Tempest Mark V. And they are all exactly the same kits as the Mini Wing, sorry, the Micro Wings models that you can buy in the shelves nowadays. And they're quite easy to get hold of. But this particular boxing was only limited release. I think it was only released for maybe 12 to 18 months. And they're quite collectible. If you, if you can get hold of one of these... Uh, you can get it quite reasonably. It's a very collectible item. 1976 there. We go through to 1978. And again, you've got um, Revell Concost releasing a model of this kit, the Hawker Tempest in 144 scale. That was released in 78. And then in 1992, we have a slightly more familiar colour for a Revell kit. Um, interesting, the serial numbers changed to 4038. Bears no resemblance to the previous number 16, but it says original artwork as before. All the decals are exactly the same. The kit is identical. Um, there's something interesting about this particular boxing that I've never noticed before. When Revell handled the marketing for Matchbox models, they always use this logo on the Matchbox model kits, which uh, usually meant that the box, the contents inside the box were at either late stage coloured sprues or single coloured sprues um, but this logo is definitely present on the Matchbox models and it's present on this offering as well in 1992 which of course is when Match Matchbox were marketed by Revell at that time. Then in 2012 we've got the the model that you are able to get in the shops nowadays um, 04915 the micro wings the familiar boxing it's different decals in the box now different artwork um, and yeah, I quite like these little micro wing kits. They're very cheap and cheerful. And um, yeah, you can have some fun building these. We'll leave you with an image now of a Tempest Mark V. This is one of the early pre-production 
um, Tempest under evaluation by the RAF. Not sure who's flying that aircraft in that, guys, but it is one of the early generation aircraft. We'll just pan the camera down now and show you this lovely little kit. And it is a lovely little kit. I'm very impressed with this lovely little kit when I had a look at it inside. On the front, you've got um, the image you saw before, 04915 on the side. Yep, yeah, that's the opening. It's, it's a side opening, not an end opening. Um, you can just see all here. It's all, you know, pretty easy. Not an awful lot of information. And on the back, you've got some jet suggestions there for paint, glue and brushes and modeling knife. All stuff of which they sell. Revell sell as a marketed product. We'll open the packaging now and we'll have a quick look to see what we've got inside. There's not an awful lot in here, so it's not going to take a huge amount of time. We'll put that to one side first of all. And we'll have a look first of all at this. No, we'll have a look at this first. Um, this is the general safe, general and safety instructions that you get in every Revell kit. Um, and it's the same sheet that you get in every Revell kit, even though it's gone into a tiny little box like this. And it's in lots and lots of different languages, front and back, which is great. Well done, Revell. Instruction leaflet. <clears throat> Instruction leaflet is quite easy to understand. It's an A4 sheet of paper. Might be no, it is an A4 sheet of paper. On the front page, you've got an image of the original artwork from the front there, micro wings and the Revell logo. And then underneath that, you've got some keys, um, symbols used during the construction of the kit on the plans, which is quite nice. Lots of different languages there too, which is good. And on the back page, you've got the paint guide and the decal application guide. And that's quite easy to follow as well. You can see there, there's an aircraft based from 222 Squadron. And on the other side, you've got general information, safety information and hints and tips. And then you've got pictorial hints and tips at the bottom. And then you've got a paint call out here on the top of the instructions. It's just giving you an idea what colours to paint whilst you're building this model. Quite easy to follow. And then you've got a five stage construction guide, which includes a parts plan. I'm always a fan of parts plans, as you know, if you follow my channel, always like seeing parts plans, it makes IDing parts a lot easier. In section one, you're basically putting the airframe together. There's no cockpit interior, no pilot, no nothing on this kit. So all I would recommend to do before you apply the fuselage halves and glue them together is to just darken the inside down with matte black or uh, uh, like an interior green or something. In section two, you're putting the airframe together. The kit will go together very, very quickly. In section three, you've got the rocket armament. Section four and section five, you're basically just putting the undercarriage and the canopy into place, and then it shows you how to put the stand together. Um, yeah, no problem whatsoever. So that's quite easy to follow. Yep. Yeah. The decals. Now, one of the things that always amazed me about the decals on these little microwing kits is how good they are. I'll take the dust sheet off and we'll show you these decals because they're actually really nice. Um, then there's not many of them, obviously. The kit's 144 scale. Um, and the register on these decals is pretty good. In actual fact, the register on these decals is fantastic. These are far superior to decals that you would have, say, got in a a 1960s release airfix aircraft kit in 72nd scale. They're very, very nice and they're not that raised. They are a little bit raised, they're a bit pronounced, but they're not too bad at all. And I think they'll lay on the kit really nicely. Now then, the parts. I've not opened this up before, so yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Let's just slide that back down and open these up. Get the canopy out, show you guys. Oh, I've just dropped it on the floor. <laughs> there we go. Now the canopy on this kit is tiny. But it's quite clear, isn't it? Quite impressed with that. That looks quite clear. The framing on it isn't fantastic, but then it's 144 scale, which you expect. The stand. There's your stand. It's a typical stand from the Microwings range. They're all identical to this. 
no problem whatsoever with that and then the sprue it's only one sprue in this kit I don't really need to go through these parts because they're all pretty much run of a mill they're covered in flash they'll need cleaning up dreadfully but as you can see the panel lines are very very faint um, they still might need a little bit of sanding down but they're very very faint and they are all raised even on the fuselage but you can see the overall accuracy of this kit is not that bad is it it's not bad at all undercarriage is very rudimentary and there's the name of the kit the tempest it's upside down sorry tempest and it's marked kit number 16 which is interesting even though the serial number on the model is 04915 they've kept the original they haven't tried to swat it out whatsoever they've just kept it original number 16 when it was originally released in the early 70s so anyway we'll just pop this back and i'll just try and get the gun for it out as quickly as possible there's not a lot to go through on this kit at all it's um it's very simple it should fly together i would have thought pretty pretty quickly indeed right we'll leave you a nice image there and what we'll do is we'll just go through the gump and I can get this video closed down for you. The model we're doing an inbox review on today is Ravel's Hawker Tempest Mark V from their Micro Wing series, originally Mini Wing series. The serial number of the kit was originally number 16, but in the releases of the Micro Wing series it's 04915. Original release date was 1973 and the kit's moulded in 1144 scale. Now, there are decals for a Tempest Mark V ZDV of RAF 222nd Squadron based at Quackenbrook in 1945. There are 21 parts on one grey plastic sprue and three parts on a clear plastic sprue, totalling 24 parts in total. The dimensions of the kit are about two and three quarter inches long by three and a quarter inches in span, and it should sit just under an inch high on its undercarriage. Now, the options and costs... I've only really included the small scale up to 144th. If I'd have gone with the other scales, I think this list would have been immense. Um, but in 1700th scale, there's a company called Sukuda Hobby who build a Royal Air Force aircraft set comprising a Spitfire, a Hurricane, a Tempest and a Mosquito. I've got no pricings on those, but I wouldn't have thought they were a huge amount of money. Uh, in 144th scale, you have four standalone kits, that have been reboxed by several other companies. Um, Crown built a Tempest Mark V. That kit retails for about six to ten pound. The Crown models tend to be quite crude. Uh, F Toys build an adversary set with an FW190D and a Tempest Mark V for between fifteen and twenty quid. It's quite a nice kit, but it's predominantly mostly made up already. The Ravel Micro Wings Mini Wing series kits of the Tempest Mark V retail for anything from two. To 29 quid but usually around about a fiver and trumpeter build a tempest mark 5 and 144 scale and that retails about five to seven pound that kit is really nice um, but it's probably not a huge amount better than the ravel model even though the trumpeter kits molding is much more recent a company called ahm rebox the crown kit of the tempest mark 5 no pricings on that the crown kit was also reboxed by Academy Minicraft, who sells the model for between six and ten pound. Mini Hobby models rebox the trumpeter kit, that goes for about ten to twelve pound. And page, uh, sorry, Minicraft model kits rebox the crown kit of the Tempest Mark V, and that goes for about eleven to twelve pound. Now I've got no pricings for the next four models, but obviously you can tell that they're going to be. Um, reboxed uh, other kits Paget Brothers rebox the trumpeter kit no pricings on that Ravel Concost Ravel Japan and Ravel Kikola rebox the Ravel kit and no pricings on any of those but if they ever came up on the second hand market or on eBay they'll probably go for about fiver conclusions another fun and quick build from Ravel these kits are cheap easy to acquire and crude and rudimentary but they have no interior whatsoever but they do have faint panel lines, which won't require too much TLC. They also have a pretty accurate outline. With only 24 parts, it should fly together with no snags very, very quickly. All the options in this scale are much of a muchness, so the Ravel kit would be the one I would recommend.
because of its price. And I hope this uh, video has been of some use. Um, and that concludes for this inbox of you. I uh, hope your projects are all running very smoothly. If you have any questions, queries, just pop them in the comments list. I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. And um, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.